Hi, I'm Jerry from PressureWasher.net, Bulldog Boat Pressure Washers, Rocco Vacuums, these are all my products. I'm going to talk about electrical bulletproofing. Um, this is a 12 volt burner. Um, 12 volt burners, against my interest, have got a bad rap for reliability, and all of the reliability happens around how it's connected and how it's, um, how it's wired. So bulletproofing the wiring is how to make them reliable. I got 12 volt igniters out there that are, that are as old as 25 years old. So I know I can make them reliable and this is how you do it. Um, first of all, um, on electrical systems that have to be reliable, you don't use a wire that's barely rated for the current that's going through it. If you're gonna use a uh, electric wire to power a widget that requires 15 amps, you're not going to use a little 14 gauge wire because what if a connection goes bad? What, what, what if it tries to draw more power or the battery's getting low and it draws more power? You know, as your battery's going down in, in voltage, the current that it draws goes up. Well, more power, more amperage across the wire can cause contacts to go bad can cause uh, connections to overheat and then they go from bad to worse. So bulletproofing electrical actually is something that's done by the, by the manufacturer, but in most industries, especially this one, the man manufacturers don't understand, don't care, don't want you to have the most bulletproof equipment on the planet. So I'm gonna show you what the difference is, all right? This guy runs, uh, th this is a, um, uh, this, this is a Beckett 12 volt burner, draws about, six, about 15 amps to run it, and that would require uh, typically a 14 gauge wire. Well, we're going to use a 12 gauge wire. Oh no, wait, that's not Jerry's style. Jerry goes to 10 gauge. We're going to go up two sizes because not only do we want it to be reliable, but it's going to bounce down the road on your trailer for the rest of its life. It needs to be beefy and abusable. The bigger the wire, the bigger the connections. Big beefy connections are the ones that are gonna last. Now, how do we make a beefy connection stay together? Well, this is, this is the detail that I wanted to show you. Whenever you're gonna take a group of wires and put them in a wire nut, twist the wires individually because if you don't, then when you screw this on, it trains them all in one direction and puts torque against them. And when you go to take the wire nut off, yeah, the service guy's gonna to need to take the wire, off, wire nut off someday. It breaks wires. And if it gets stuck in here and you can't get it apart, that's a bad day. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, and you need to reuse the wire nut, that's a bad night, okay? So I'm saying, if you want it to be reliable and you want it to be serviceable, twist these wires individually. Make sure that you're grouping them perfectly together. I've got a zip tie on here to hold them together even better. Okay, that's going to be more beefy and it also makes it easier for me to group these things together perfectly. Neatness counts, not just for the way it looks, but the way it goes together and stays together. So when I put this wire nut on here, it goes on over all of the wires at the same time evenly. There's no way one of them can get out of there. And let me show you how tight tight is on a wire nut. It's freaking tight, okay? Make it as tight as you can make it. and because we twisted those wires individually, it's gonna come off easy enough anyway. I don't want it to come off. It's, it's got a spring inside there. That, that, that wire connection up inside the wire nut is actually a little spring, okay? So you're spring loading it by putting the extra torque on it. That makes it hold no matter what, like bouncing it down the road for the rest of its life on whatever road, on whatever trailer, okay? So that, wire nut is going to stay on there until the next time I want it to come off. And it'll be reusable and serviceable because I did it right, okay? Also, when you're doing electrical in confined spaces like this, there's a lot of wires that go in this little tiny, little tiny slot. What I've done here is I've cut the wires back so that I don't have any extra wire in the box. There's a, a couple wires over here that I'm not using. I've got them tight, taped off, tied off, it's out of the way. It's not gonna influence the rest of the box. I'm gonna tuck it in here in the middle so that uh, it can't get stuck on the side. And when I lazy loop these wires together in this group, 
okay? These guys are all going to lay over here nicely. Watch this. If I, if I group these real nicely together, again, same length. Push that one back. Pull that one forward, okay? Make sure these things are twisted individually. And, and I mean twisted, okay? Twist them up nice individually. Then when you put them together, all at the same length. See, it's better to be patient and get it done the right way than to be impatient and get it the wrong way. And then one of those little wires comes out of there and you're down for the night. Wouldn't it be a drag to lose a contract? Uh, a, a, a contract because of one loose wire because somebody was impatient I think you want us to be patient when we put them together I want you to be patient with this when you service it and when you put that wire nut on how tight is tight it's really tight so I'm gonna twist the heck out of this make it really tight okay and there's no way those are coming loose okay this is abusable it can bounce down the road this stuff isn't going anywhere that's abusable. Okay, now, because I shorten the wires and I tied them up nice and neat, now when I go to put these back in and fold up this little confined space cover, these things are gonna be nice and neat. Look at how nicely that folds up in there. It tucks right in real nice. There's no way I'm gonna get any pinched wires on either side. There's only one way to do this. If you want it to be reliable, you'd better get it right. This is how you do it, okay? So no pinched wires, no harm, no foul. That's how to get that in there, okay? Now, um, I'm also gonna show you um, a little bit about wire looming. If you have to follow wires, especially if there's a few that are the same color in the bundle that you're gonna wire, isn't it nice when you can follow the wires? So, you know, as neatness counts, I like to have these wires laid in to each other as neatly as possible. If I'm gonna have a, a, a zip tie go around here, and by the way, I wanna show you how I do a zip tie for serviceability. Instead of going around once, I'm gonna go around twice with this zip tie, and there's two reasons for doing this. First of all, it holds three times stronger in that position, okay? It's quite a bit tighter because of the surface area that's putting pressure on the wires. It's less likely to slip. It's gonna stay where I want it to be. I don't want it to stay where the trailer wants it to be or the bump in the road. I want it to stay where I want it to be, okay? Anchored down and not laying against something hot or something sharp. So when I bundle things together, I'm gonna to deliberately put them where I want them and I want it to stay there. So I'm gonna put that zip tie on there and I'm gonna cut it off and it's ready to go to town. Okay, now if I ever needed to take that off again and I'm in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, I can clip the, the side of that zip tie that makes it reusable and it's still long enough to go around at least once. That's actually a reusable zip tie. So be a, be a friend to the service guy in the middle of the night because remember that wire needs to not lay against a sharp edge. It needs to not lay against something hot. So. The, the zip tie is a tool, and if you can use a zip tie twice, you're, you're, you're a friend to the service guy, and you might be the service guy. So these are, everything has to be beefy. You, when you're crimping a wire, you wanna crimp the wire so that it's as beefy as possible. And while I'm talking about that, I wanna show you something. These crimp connectors are made from a flat piece of metal, and they're bent into the shape that you want them to be, okay? So they've taken this flat piece of metal and they've bent this into the shape that you want it to be and there's a joint right there at the top of this and when you go to the back end of this to push the wire in, if you're using a staking tool which makes the beefiest crimp, you wanna stake it in the back, you don't wanna stake it in the front because staking it in the front can push those two pieces of metal apart and that's a bad thing, that's a loose connection. Okay, this one is tight enough. I can yank on it all day long. I can bounce this thing down the road for the next 100,000 miles. It's not going anywhere. That's a beefy connection because I intend it to be a beefy connection. This is bulletproofing, okay? Make sure it slips on tight. Nothing's loose. 
Life is good. I like indicator lights to tell me whether there's something getting power or not. That's easier for troubleshooting. Electrical indicators are cool. They tell you where you have power and where you don't. Um, you don't want to spend all night trying to figure out that you just have a blown fuse. Okay? You don't want to look for something that's wrong and forget to prove what's right. There's two ways to troubleshoot. And indicators will help you to remind you that you look for what's wrong or you look for what's right. Sometimes, you know, well, you might think, well, I've heard the guy say that this is what's wrong when I get that effect. No, 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 wait. You do your own troubleshooting. And the first rule of troubleshooting, do the easy stuff first. Okay? First thing you can do is look at an indicator. All right. Next thing you can do is look at fuses. Look at your fuses. That may solve the problem. Or it's an indicator of, of a bigger problem. If the fuse blows, don't just replace the fuse with a bigger fuse. Look for something that would cause a fuse to blow, like a wire laying against something sharp or a, a connector that got loose and touched something else. Um, when you have everything zip tied, you won't have those kinds of problems. But hey, what are you working on? Something that hasn't been across my desk or yours? You know, maybe somebody else didn't put the care and uh, attention into the bulletproofing. The next thing we need to do is um, protect the wires going through the housing. An easy way to protect the wires going through the housing is number one, use good quality wire. These wires might look fairly small and thin, but the reason that the jacket is thin is because these are machine tool wire. These are not automotive wire that requires a thicker version of a cheap jacket. These are actually nylon coated. This is high temperature, high abrasion resistant. This is, these are the finest wires available. Uh, but going through the housing, we need, to, um, we need to clamp these into place here. And just as bulletproofing and to keep things from, getting, uh, for, from moving around, one thing that I like to do is once you get things situated to where they're going to live, then grab your bundle, pull it out of the connector a little bit, get a piece of electrical tape on here. That holds them together in a round bundle because that's where that's how the clamp was made to clamp. We don't want to pinch anything individually. We don't want anything to slip, and we don't want to over tighten it anyway. So we're going to use that method for just making it a little easier to anchor this stuff down without ever having any pinch. See how they all stay in the middle? Okay, enough said. We'll tighten this up a little bit. Okay, everything's snug, ready for the ready for the war. Bounce it down the road. Always go up at least one or two sizes on a wire for the load, and also fuse everything. This system, before it's completely installed, is going to have a main fuse coming from the battery. It's going to have a fuse protecting the power that goes to the high voltage of the fuel solenoid to protect the high voltage in the fuel solenoid. It's going to have a uh, third fuse to, contract, to, to protect the control circuit that turns on the relay that puts power to the high voltage in the coil. Everything fused is a safer piece of equipment. Nothing's going to catch on fire. Nothing's going to burn up in a horrible way. It'd be better if it blew a fuse so that it, re it reminds you, you know, hey, the light's not very bright. Oh, wait, we've got a low battery. Okay, so charge the battery up before you try to turn the heater back on. Look, it just blew a fuse. Isn't it easier to do things the smart way and have longer term lower cost because they were set up for not having expensive failure? Bulletproofing your electrical system, bulletproofing your pump systems, bulletproofing anything is about knowing how bad things can be and ensuring that it can't get there. That's bulletproofing electrical. Come see us at pressurewasher.net if you want to buy the stuff that doesn't break.